Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we're talking about an area that is clearly adjacent to artificial intelligence, which is robotics. If you're a regular listener to this show, you know that we cover the big announcements and updates. We covered the Figure 01, for example, which we'll give a little reminder on. But even if you are not a regular listener, you've almost certainly seen a Boston Dynamics robot somewhere on social media at some time. They're the company behind Spot, which is the mobile robot dog, which is already at use in industrial sites, monitoring operations, watching for safety issues, even being a part of some police forces. Well, in addition to Spot, Boston Dynamics has long been working on a humanoid robot called Atlas. Yesterday, the company premiered a new version of Atlas that represents a total break from what they've done in the past. The video shows a robot laying on the ground totally flat and then slowly starting to work its way up. However, it doesn't get up in the way that a normal robot would, or rather, a human imitating robot would. Instead, all of its joints seem double-jointed, and it's able to lift itself up in a totally different and frankly smoother way, and then readjust itself to be reconfigured like a human before it walks out of the frame. This video captured a ton of attention yesterday when it was released. Indeed, I'm recording this just about 25 hours after this video came out, and it has 7.5 million views, more than 50,000 likes on Twitter slash X. And that's just the original video on Boston Dynamics' first post. That's to say nothing of the thousands and thousands of other posts that used some version of this video. One part of the conversation was simple excitement. Lex Friedman, for example, said, Congrats to Boston Dynamics on their new electric version of Atlas. Thanks to all the amazing engineering teams at Boston Dynamics, Tesla, and others pushing the field of robotics forward. I can't wait to hang out with Atlas and Optimus together at some point. Robot party. But another part of the conversation was about how this changed people's perceptions of how a robot could move. YouTuber Matthew Berman, for example, called Atlas 2.0 a, quote, brand new state-of-the-art humanoid robot that moves unlike anything I've ever seen. Dr. Jim Fan from NVIDIA said, It took my brain a while to parse what's going on in this video. We are so obsessed with human-level robotics that we forget it is just an artificial ceiling. Why don't we make a new species superhuman from day one? Boston Dynamics has once again reinvented itself, gradually, then suddenly. Now, this post provoked a lot of conversation. The fact that Jim chose to use the word species and to introduce the concept of superhuman, this is obviously a sensitive one for a lot of people. A lot of folks' concerns about the future of AI and robotics has to do with the concerns of designing things that are inherently better than people. Holding aside any of that controversy, though, I think the really interesting thing that Jim is pointing out is that designing things to perfectly mirror how human bodies work may actually not be maximizing the opportunities of robotic mobility. Indeed, I think a lot of people's reactions and part of why this video hit so hard yesterday is that it was the first time that they had seen something that actually made it clear that a direct one-to-one human-to-robot translation might not be the approach that maximizes the opportunity. Scott Walter at Going Ballistic 5 explained a little bit more about what we're seeing in this video. He writes, The Boston Dynamics new Atlas is not double-jointed. The knee and elbow both have normal range of motion and cannot hyperextend. The knee linkage mechanism prevents this possibility, but the elbow looks to be a conscious design and not a mechanical restriction. But by having extended range of motion in the hip and shoulder, neck and torso, they can easily mirror the limbs to quickly reverse direction in one step. Looks unnatural, but is a clever solution. However, for many people, what this video really did was reinforce the idea that we are getting very close to these robots being extremely capable, with enormous possible implications. Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson said, We are roughly three to five years away from general purpose labor bots entering the workforce. I own a Boston Dynamics dog. Our construction company will likely purchase the successor to this model to augment the workforce. XPRIZE creator Peter Diamandis said, The global market for humanoid robots could exceed 10 billion, maybe tens of billions. The future is amazing. And this is a theme that a lot of people have been talking about. Back a year ago, VC Vinod Kosla wrote, The thing nobody talks about is that in 10 years, we'll have a million bipedal robots, and in 25 years, we'll have a billion. You'll buy yours for 10K, and it'll be as important to your life as your smartphone is now. The fascinating thing about this, and why VCs get so excited about it, is that this really is a space that has a virtually uncapped upside. We have no idea what the total addressable market for robotics will be, but it's going to be enormous. So big, in fact, that it's very likely that there will be multiple big multi-billion dollar companies that are created in the space. Two of the others that are worth keeping an eye on are Figure, which recently closed a $675 million funding round with investors that included Microsoft, OpenAI, NVIDIA, and Jeff Bezos, and which you might remember premiered this video of their O1 humanoid robot, 
powered by OpenAI's ChatGPT to interact with the human in a very natural way. When the person interacting with the robot says that they're hungry, it's able to identify an apple from in front of the robot and give it to the human. Figure CEO Brad Adcock was just in Forbes as well, discussing the company's ambitions. Forbes summed it up on Twitter by saying, Brett Adcock wants his company's humanoid robots to fill job shortages in factories and do work that is unsafe for humans, and someday take out your trash and make you coffee. And this is really the optimistic side of this. Again, Vinod Kosla from last November, bipedal robots have the capacity to transform every vertical from elder care to factories and farms. Few are preparing for how this will radically change GDP, productivity, and human happiness these robots could create enough value to support the people they replace. In a further prediction, he wrote, In 25 years, there could be a billion bipedal robots, a million in 10 years, doing a wide range of tasks, including fine manipulation. We could free humans from the slavery of the bottom 50% of really undesirable jobs like assembly line and farm workers. This could be a larger industry than the auto industry. Now, of course, the way that society adapts to 50% of those undesirable jobs being gone remains an open question, although one perhaps a little bit outside of the scope of this particular episode. The last note for those of you who are using this as a chance to get up on your robotics, another big player in the space is of course Tesla. Their humanoid robot is called Optimus, and frankly we haven't seen any big updates from it lately. I think given the figure 01, as well as now this excitement around the new Atlas, I would be very surprised if some video didn't drop soon. For now, really crazy and interesting times, like I said, an offshoot and related area to AI. But that's going to do it for this AI breakdown. Until next time, peace.